my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today we are going to be exploring, exploring something that came out of my hen house and it is this. <laughs> Look! It's the tiniest little egg laid by one of my chickens. This is often called a fairy egg and it is a very small tiny egg laid by, in this case, chickens. So we got chicks back in spring, they grow and they turn into pullets, which is sort of the adolescent stage. And then they're kind of just like small chickens for a little while. And in about 20 weeks after they hatch, that's when you begin to start seeing eggs generally. And when they first begin producing eggs, sometimes they misfire producing tiny little eggs like this. Sometimes you'll get double yolkers, which is a giant egg with two yolks inside. And it's because their reproductive system is just sort of working things out. But this little egg is so stinking precious. And as the chickens get bigger, the eggs get progressively bigger as well makes sense bigger chicken bigger eggs so when they first start laying they lay small eggs not this small and those are medium-sized eggs that you would find at the grocery store sometimes they're smaller i'm not sure what they do with those eggs i suspect they make them into egg whites or they beat them all together to make liquidized eggs that big corporations buy <laughs> so they can feed buffet counters all over the world but we buy here at least in the u.s large and extra large eggs and those are fully grown chicken eggs this is a fairy egg and i want to know what's inside so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to find out what's inside my little fairy egg all right my lovelies let's go ahead and get started so to give you a little sense of relativity let's compare this fairy egg with some regular size large chicken eggs these two were laid by my chickens so get an idea of the size comparison, right? Or here's some beautiful olive egg or eggs. Aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful color. I actually took one of these eggshells <laughs> to Home Depot to get it scanned so I could get a paint color from the eggshell. And the <laughs> person that helped me was very confused by that and said, what is that? And I said, it's an egg. And then he asked me if it was real. And I said, yes. He's like, okay. So he was treating it very gently. So as if not to accidentally break it, it's very cute. So there's an olive egg, egg and here is a massive brown egg. Look at that. This would be an extra large egg, but right. So this is about the size of the yolk. I would say, of course, it's more oval in shape rather than being round. So what do I do with this tiny little fairy egg? Well, I did a poll on social media and many of you said, make a little tiny deviled egg. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna bring some water to the boil. This is how I prefer to make hard boiled eggs. I like to bring the water up to a boil first. The logic being when you place your egg in there, the proteins immediately contract, pull away from the side, the inside of the shell, and it makes for really easy peeling. So bring the water up to a boil first and we'll boil out a little fairy egg. I know there's lots of methods for nicely peeled hard boiled eggs. Other people say to steam them, to bake them, to air fry them, which makes sense. Very hot environment, proteins contract, easy peeling. Other people add vinegar to their water, uh, but this method works for me, so I use it. And normally when I do a batch of hard boiled eggs, which I usually do over the weekend so that we have a supply of hard boiled eggs, is that I place them in the hot water and for regular large eggs, I do eight minutes. For me, that's perfect. It's hard cooked on the white, but the yolk remains nice and kind of creamy in the middle, so they're not dried out. That's perfect for me. Some people like them a little bit drier. Some people like them a little bit softer, but eight minutes is the golden number for me. But that means you have to bring the water up to a boil first. Some people bring their eggs up to a boil with the water. With that method, you're gonna have a different time. So to each their own, right? Who knew there would be such complexity in boiling a hard boiled egg, right? There is though, if you want it to be cooked well and easy to peel. Alrighty, we'll come back once this water comes up to a boil. And because I have not too much water in here, this has already come up to a boil. I would say this is probably a cup and a half of water. We just need enough water to cover our egg. And our egg is small. I mean, look at our egg, it's so cute. If you put a regular sized egg on a spoon, it looks like this. We put our fairy egg, it looks like this. 
cute, right? Alrighty, now we place our little egg into the water. And since this egg is about a half or a third of the size, I'm gonna do it for three minutes. All right, so the water's a little shallow, but we'll just keep rolling around. The egg is small. And to make my deviled eggs, I'm just gonna add very minimal ingredients. A little Kewpie mayo, some Dijon mustard, a little paprika for zhuzh, salt and pepper. That's it, that's it, that's all I do for my deviled eggs. Not that I eat deviled eggs very often. Actually, I don't eat them often at all. I don't think I make them, but I like them when I have them. All right, let this bubble, bubble, boil and tumble trouble. We have 26 seconds left on the clock. I'm tilting my pan because I want the egg to be smudged completely under the water. Others of you suggested that I should make a tiny, tiny meal with a tiny egg, but I don't have any of those tiny things on hand. And gosh, that's gotta be tough. Okay, clear, stop. Okay, we're done. I'm gonna pour this water off. So what I also like to do is immediately shock the hard boiled egg into cold water, icy cold water. And what that does is immediately cools down the egg and prevents your yolk from getting that kind of gray greenish color. And that's some sort of chemical reaction that happens when the egg is very hot. So if you cool it down, then you can prevent your yolks from turning that color. So I made these little tiny bowls when I lived in Japan. I took a ceramics class with a local teacher, Araya Sensei, and yes, it's one of my little precious things. So I think this will work nicely for mixing our yolk mixture. So here's our tiny egg, our little tiny egg. And let's crack it and see what's inside. Hi, here we go. It's hard boiled. Oh, it might be a little soft boiled though. Maybe I should have boiled it longer. Maybe three minutes wasn't enough. <sighs> see how nicely it peels? This is a little softer. I can tell just by squishing it than I want it to be. So maybe four minutes, five would have been better. Squishy, squishy, but super cute. Do you think it has a yolk? All right, let's see if it has a yolk. Here we go. It does have a yolk. Oh, it's perfect. I didn't boil it enough though, look. There is a tiny yolk inside. Oh my gosh, but I didn't boil it long enough, so it's a little bit squishy. I didn't know, oh man. Okay, we can still, we can still make this work because I'm gonna scoop this out here. We'll still have our little dish for our deviled egg. I'm gonna rinse it out just so we have a nice clean bowl. Because I wasn't sure if there's gonna be a yolk inside this, and it's a perfectly formed egg in this case, I previously hard boiled some eggs. So I'm gonna use this yolk. I'm gonna poach this yolk and then make our filling for the deviled egg. So here we go. And this will be good actually. You can see the comparison in size between the fairy egg and the regular sized egg. This is actually a little bit small. This is more like a medium egg. Rinse any shells off and we're gonna cut this one in half. So there you have it. See the difference in size between the little tiny egg? So now what we're gonna do is take the yolk, egg yolk, and make our filling for the other egg. Okay, this will not go to waste, I will eat that. And to this tiny amount of egg yolk, we're going to add some black pepper, tiniest pinch of salt, mayo. QP happens to be one of my favorites and a little Dijon mustard, Grey Poupon. Do you remember those Grey Poupon commercials? They're so good. Okay, we just need the tiniest little amount, like that much. All right, and then you just mixy mix. Look how bright yellow it is. So beautiful. So I want this to be smooth. So I'm giving it a good mash, but not necessary. So I'm fitting a little piping tip into my bag because, because why not? And cut this so it fits. Just to make it feel a little extra special. 
and just the tiniest amount of, I don't even know if this will be pipeable, it's so small. The amount of filling we have here. We'll try, we'll try. Okay, one egg yolk's worth of deviled egg filling into the bag. Okay, now we've got our piping bag. I'm gonna squeeze this down and we're gonna pipe this into our little shells. Little egg <gasps> forms. Are you recording this? Okay, good, because this is all I've got. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I think I like the round swirl better. Yeah, I like that. Oh my gosh, the tiniest little deviled egg. Oh, so cute. Look at the pretty tiny little deviled eggs. They look perfectly cute. They look like normal size. It's hard to get the size sense of scale. Look how tiny. Okay. Now, we're gonna zhuzh things up a little with some paprika. That little bit of red powder makes it look extra festive. And we can add, oh my gosh, my leaves of parsley look massive next to my eggs. Oh, they're too, the proportions are all off. Okay, I'm gonna take one leaf of parsley and then I'm gonna tear it into separate pieces like that and add it to the eggs because they're so small. Just tuck them in like that. Oh, like little flags. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Oh my goodness. So cute. You're so cute. I feel like Elmira from Tiny Toons. You're so cute. So cute. She was such a creepy character. Okay. My hands are too fat. I cannot. I cannot. Okay, I'm trying my best. Stick. Stop sticking to my hand and go into the egg. Yes. Stop looking slimy. Okay, okay, okay. <gasps> Look how stinking cute. Alrighty, my lovelies, the tiniest deviled egg. Itadakimasu. Mm. Oh my goodness. I should make deviled eggs more often. They are so good. Something about that Dijon mustard. It's just transformative. Creamy, eggy, but complex with the vinegar and that little bit of whiny mustard flavor. Perfect balance of salt, pepper. Oh. Mm -hmm. I tried to take a bite out of it, but it was just so small. If you've never had a devil's egg before, it's a little bit like egg salad, but a little bit more intensely flavored, richer, and slightly more refined because you get to eat it like a little appetizer. But there you have it. My fairy egg, princess egg, witch egg, cock egg transformed into the tiniest deviled egg. And it was absolutely scrum delicious. Big thanks to my hens for contributing the eggs for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. I should have made an entire batch of deviled eggs because that was not enough. Not nearly.